Welcome, everyone. As he said, I'm Steve Martin, and this is my creative partner, Mark Spencer. Thanks for coming. Now, if you'll recall, it was four years ago that Final Cut Pro 10 was introduced on this stage. And controversy notwithstanding, Apple delivered a completely reimagined editing interface that since then has seen 15 updates. All free, I might add. A user base that has grown to a million seats and a vibrant third-party development community that has created thousands of free plugins. And unless you've been lost in some back corner of the Central Hall the past couple of days, you probably know that yesterday morning Apple released new versions of Funica Pro 10, Motion, and Compressor. And Steve and I have had a little sneak peek at this, and tonight we're excited to showcase for you some of the new features and some plugins that we've developed based on this release. Now before we get to that, you may have also heard that a Warner Brothers movie called Focus was edited entirely in Final Cut Pro 10. What we'd like to do is show you a short trailer from that feature right now. So what about the big con? The one where we make so much money we all retire. What makes you think you can trust her? But I should trust you. But it wouldn't be nothing. You lost everyone's money. Wow. Nothing. And now we're dead. Hey! That's what you get when you hire a con man. <laughs> I still got it. Rated R. Experience it in IMAX. Well, tonight we're very, very fortunate to have the editor of Focus join us from Los Angeles. Please give a warm welcome to editor Jan Kovic. Hey, guys. Hey, how are you doing? Uh -huh. How are you doing? You're welcome. Good to Thank see you. you. Thank you, guys. Thanks for coming. So, Funnel Cup Pro, why did your creative che team choose Funnel Cup Pro to edit this feature? Um, the director is an I love working as a team. And Final Cut Pro 10 is a great collaborative tool for us. And even through every permutation of collaboration on the, on the project, I think that was the reason number one. Second reason was we wanted to do as much in, uh, within our NLE as possible and we wanted to work in a theatrical resolution with our original negative, basically, in online quality all the way to our theatrical release. And third, uh, which, which was especially Glenn's favorite, uh, roles instead of tracks. He loves the fact that Final Cut Pro 10 doesn't follow the old film paradigm of tracks, and then the organization of your sound is based on content, not on numbers. Excellent. Now, I hear you're a big fan of Final Cut Pro's skimmer. Oh, yeah, I love it. I mean, I stopped, I stopped, uh, I've been using JKL keys for years, and with skimmer, it went away. So. Uh, it was, it's pretty cool because you can get within the clip and, you know, basically skim outside of it or inside, depending on where you want to be in your, in your project. Well, I want to do, um, elaborate on something you said just a moment ago. You said the director, you mentioned Glenn, Glenn Ficar, the, the editor, of, the, one of the co-directors. Correct. He really liked the collaborative process with Final Cut Pro. It gave him a lot of hands-on editing. Yeah, they were, him and John, the other director, they were both my co-editors throughout the process in every aspect uh, of that word. And uh, we, sometimes I started a cut of a scene, they did the notes instead of me. Sometimes I did the notes on their cut. And we really flipped it around in so many different ways. I can't really list them here all, but uh, yeah, we, we did it and uh, we were happy with the way it came along and the way we could collaborate in the project. So you use titles. The Titles that actually ended up in the film were titles that were taken right yeah, out of the title yeah, browser. They are just, they are, yeah, they are just standard, standard titles and title to basic title to in Final Cut with some uh, move in and move out. That's also standard, and we just adjusted the focus title itself to match the breathing of the 1.3 anamorphic lens, uh, which was also done in focus. I mean, in <laughs> in Final Cut. Uh, and again, thanks to working in the acquisition format, you are able to go with this all the way to theaters, exporting it with Alpha Channel, and uh, take it to uh, Quantel Pablo for, for DI. Uh, you just pop it over as another layer, and uh, not this picture, <laughs> over, <laughs> over another layer, and uh, it ended up in the, in the theaters. That's, that's excellent. That was wonderful. So, can you tell us a little bit about what you're working on now? Yeah, we are doing, uh, we are doing another feature. This time it's uh, Paramount. Just finished shooting on Thursday, so sorry about me being tired, guys. Just cut back and set up the uh, editing systems. 
uh, I just want to say the, that Glenn and John uh, are my co-editors again, and as directors and writers, they are really ruthless to their own material, and they lose everything that doesn't doesn't work. And uh, if there was some technical hindrance to their process, they would lose it also. Uh, but uh, after their experience with Final Cut on the previous movie, they decided again to go with the, with the same system and uh, smooth sailing so far. Well, excellent. So uh, we look forward to having you back and tell us about your new workflow for your new feature. Uh, everyone give a big warm thank you for him coming you, out Ryan. today. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The fact that those titles ended up in a feature film is a great segue to our next topic. As Mark mentioned at the start, Apple released a new version of Final Cut that included this amazing 3D text engine. And what we want to do now is walk you through some of these features to show you how powerful this, this 3D, text, uh, 3D title feature is. So we have a shot of the Golden Gate Bridge, obviously, here. And we're over the Titles browser. We have two new categories of titles, 3D, uh, cinematic and regular 3D. We're going to go ahead and add a custom 3D title over this clip. And Mark's going to go ahead and uh, double click and change the title really quickly. And if you click right on the text, you'll get the on screen controls. I want you to see you have complete 3D text here with the extrusion lighting, reflection maps, complete 3D universe. It's 3D title. Excellent. Okay, what we want to go ahead and do now is change the font and maybe reduce the size a little bit, maybe a little bit more of a classic font. There, yeah, classic, classic font. San Francisco, Where baby. Where is there, 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 there it is. There it is. There it is. There. Now go ahead and reduce the font size a little bit. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, move that title down and match the perspective of the bridge. Move that, move that into place. And we're going to go ahead and zoom in just a bit so we can get a closer look at the text. And what you're going to see here is the text by default is, has a material that's a white plastic. But if you click on this little button here, you have all these different materials that you can apply. You can apply concrete, you can apply metals, you can apply wood, and it's all built in their gorgeous, gorgeous textures. We're going to go ahead and apply a car paint. Just like that, we have this car paint. Now, this particular material is composed of three layers or composited together, a finish layer, a paint layer, and a substance. And I'm going to have Mark turn it off each one so you can see that each one uh, contributes to the composite. Then I want to zoom up a little bit, yeah, because it was being cut off there. I think the, the red of the paint is a little overbearing, so go ahead and turn that off. And the red doesn't really match the Golden Gate Bridge, so let's go ahead and sample the orange and the bridge stanchion. Excellent. And maybe go ahead and reduce uh, the brightness just a little bit. And let's, uh, let's play with the extrusion. So or actually, we're, we're not using these fancy words. Oh, the lighting, yes. Uh, you'll notice the lighting has come from the west of hitting the Golden Gate Bridge. We're going to go ahead and match the scene lighting using this uh, diagonal right light, light here. Excellent. And now he's playing with the depth. There we go. So Mark, why don't you go ahead and zoom out so we can see the scene again. And now what we're going to do is animate using the behaviors or uh, parameters right here in the inspector. And I have to tell you, I've been playing with this for a little bit. These 3D titles are so responsive. There's no rendering. You play them back. He's making all these changes. You can change the material, the lighting, the textures, all in real time as you're adjusting them. And it, it's just, just fantastic. I would put these titles up with anything I've seen on network television or in feature films. They are that good. Right. Now, if you like the 3D titles in Final Cut Pro, you're going to love them if you, when you go into motion. Because in motion, you can cast shadows, reflections, animate lights, animate cameras. You can track text to scenes. You can just go crazy with the 3D title features inside of motion. And then when you're done, you can actually publish them to Final Cut Pro for Final Cut Pro users. So motion takes things to the next level. And I just want to quickly say that, uh, well, we have been working with this program for a little bit. Uh, we have full training on both 
Motion and Final Cut Pro out there. Now you can walk out with a little USB stick with all the training. Uh, you want to check those out if you're interested. They're at our table in the center of the room. In fact, we think that the 3D title feature is a real game changer. In fact, we believe it so much, we created not one, but four plugins based on the 3D title tools. And what Mark's going to do now is walk you through some of those features. Great. Thanks, Steve. So, as Steve mentioned, we uh, just yesterday released four new 3D title plugins, and they're distributed through FX Factory. So, if you have FX Factory, you update, you'll see them show up in the titles browser in Chronicle Pro 10. And here they are. And uh, I'll demonstrate one of them, but I'll mention a few. Ripple 3D Title Styles is a massive collection of over 200 beautiful and diverse customized text styles that are animated, and they're organized by theme for easy browsing. You can see there's just a massive amount here that you can choose something that's going to fit your own project. And they all have really nice previews, which means that just by skimming over them, you can see exactly what that texture and lighting is going to look like when you add it to your project. And of course, they're completely adjustable as well. And with them, you can make things that look something like this, as an example. <laughs> So that's Ripple 3D Title Styles. Ripple 3D Title Scenes are full 3D environments that include floors and ceiling, floors and walls, lights, shadows, reflections, animatable cameras. And with these plugins, Ripple 3D Title Scenes, you can do things like And then, what I want to mention in particular, Ripple 3D animations are a set of supercharged animations, and these are actually free, so you can just use these out the box to create really great animations. But I want to show you Ripple 3D title drops, because these are really cool. These allow you to use your own texture on 3D text. Any image you shoot, any graphics, I'll show you how it works. I've got this shot here of Las Vegas, which is not what it looks like tonight, with that sandstorm going out there. But I'll, uh, I'll attach this one called Open Drop, and I'll change the text to say, oh, I don't know, an A, B, B. Oops. <laughs> That's a damn you autocorrect. All right, now I happen to have some images that I've been shooting around Vegas for the past couple of days. Uh, just textures, I love shooting textures. So I'm gonna just click the material well here, and I can click in these and see exactly what these textures will look like when applied to this 3D text. And they're absolutely stunning. Uh, in fact, here is uh, some artwork that my son painted, and I just shot it with my iPhone. In fact, all these images I just shot with my iPhone and can just airdrop right into, uh, on the Mac and import into Final Cut. And this is uh, the back of Steve's dog, Darla. <laughs> so you can see how beautiful these textures look. I kind of like this one because it's the baggage claim at McCarran Airport. So I'll apply that one. And then I can play, I'm not rendering anything, right? I'm just previewing this, playing it back in real time. And of course, there's many different animation options that you can use to modify the animation, the size, the text, everything about it. But that gives you a brief idea of how you can use your own textures on 3D text in motion. So what I want to end with is I've got a 60-second little trailer that gives you a sense of the kind of things that you can do with the new 3D title features in Final Cut Pro and Motion using our tutorials and using our plugins. So um, 
Jan, Jan is going to be uh, out by our booth out there, so if uh, you want to come out after the show's over, he's going to stick around for a little while if you want to talk about it. I know the, the audio was hard to hear here, so I apologize for that. But thank you. Right. Thanks for coming. Thanks for watching our presentation. Steve Martin and Mark Spencer from Ripple Trading, thank you so much for being here tonight.